Welcome to Fairfield Public Access Television. I'm Susan Kessel and you're watching Channel 9 in Fairfield and we're making a real visit to the dentist today um, with Teresa Holt, dentist. Um, not my favorite thing to do, <laughs> but I also wanted to do this for a long time because I wanted to share with the community that it's not as painful and um, as bad as people used to think about it with all the modern technology and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dentistry has really changed within the past, even the past 10 years. It's a lot more prevention oriented and um, you'll see a lot more people holding on to their teeth. That's great. Which is wonderful. Um, Teresa Holt is a dentist here in Fairfield along with her husband, which is another unusual um, combination, I think. Yes, we, we met while we were in dental school out in Omaha, Nebraska, and we sat right next to each other in our dental lab and started dating and got married and ended up here in Fairfield. And, and you've been in Fairfield how long? It's been about 12 years. 12 years. Wow. It's I have to say, quickly. you have a picture of your husband, oh, <laughs> Michael Holt, behind the faucet. Behind the faucet. <laughs> And a beautiful daughter, Lauren, who is... Yeah, she's six years six. old. She's in kindergarten over at Washington School. So you are a busy professional lady. Oh, well, between violin, taking Lauren up to Iowa City for violin lessons and dance and everything else, it is a busy life, yes. Mm -hmm. So we're actually going to... I was here a week ago and had some um, work done on an old filling. I think it was taken out and replaced. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I was sitting there and I... I saw things going in my mouth that I wondered what in the world they were. <laughs> so I thought, well, this might be my opportunity to do a show. Yes, and I told Susan she could still back out. She doesn't have to go through with this, but she said she wants to. So This could be one of those shows that I say, oh my goodness, why did I do this? <laughs> She'll but, be done, done in three different areas, so we'll see how she talks, how she gets when how she's done. I don't talk. Yes. And like I said, this is a real, um, real visit to the dentist and um, nothing's rehearsed, so we'll nope. get started. <laughs> okay, well I'm not used to being filmed while I do this, but... We want this to be just as natural as Okay. Can. Assisting me is Connie Blakely, she's from Richland. How many years have you been with us, Connie? Seven in August. I'm gonna sit you back here now, Susan, we'll just lay you back. I'm fairly comfortable here because I've had a lot of dental work as when I open my mouth you'll be able to see. <laughs> Get my mask. Okay. And I do sometimes close my eyes not because it hurts or something but just because I don't want to see what's going on. <laughs> well we'll try to be very gentle Susan. You're so. great. Okay. And we routinely, routinely use masks and gloves and protective eyewear when we're working. Okay. Take me and explore, Connie. Okay. We're going to be up here on the upper left. There's a little break in the restoration there. And we had one down here also. Okay, we'll go ahead and get you down here, Susan. We'll be using a topical anesthetic, which I'll put in the area right above Susan's tooth here. It just kind of numbs it before we give her the injection. How long does that take? Oh, I, I like to leave it on maybe for about a half a minute or so, and then it it makes a difference if you do use it. And then for the Novocaine, how long does that take? It usually takes about a couple minutes for that to, to set in. Just depending on where you're, you're working. Sometimes the lower, if you're working on the lower arch, it takes a little longer for that anesthetic to set in. Okay, can you feel the pinch here now? I usually like to maneuver this tissue here. I don't have Parkinson's. It's just it's a good detraction. I'll give you a rinse here in a second, Susan.
and try to inject slowly so it's more comfortable for the patient. Um, yes, we do. Um, Mike uses it a lot for wisdom teeth, um, and I'll, I'll use it on children if I think they're going to be pretty, if they're pretty apprehensive, I'll, I'll use it on, on kids and adults, too. You know, I'll have people who come in and, and say that they, they need the gas. <laughs> I'm getting Susan numb in three different areas of her mouth here. So she really won't be able to do much talking later on. I did tape my show last week <laughs> after I was here. I was wondering how you got along with that. I had help. Oh, okay. Okay. Another pinch back here now. really makes a difference. When I was growing up, our family dentist never used it on us for shillings, and then I ended up becoming a dentist. Hmm. When did you decide you wanted to? Oh, I, I was in high school when I decided that that's what I wanted to do. I had a brother and sister that also were in, were in dental school at the time. Oh. Are they dentists? Yes. And my sister married a dentist. They're practicing over in Hawaii now. What you say are you from? Um, uh, yes, from Oahu. Okay. Another pinch down here, Susan. This is going to make your lower lip and your chin um, just up to the midline. You'll still have feeling in your tongue, so you'll be able to talk a little. Just lay back just a tad there. Does this side feel like it's starting to get a little numb there? Yeah, it does. Okay. And I have had a lot of uh, dental work. <laughs> Probably because I didn't have fluoride when I was little. Does that make a big difference? It does make a, a very big difference. I grew up in, in a non fluoridated area also, and I've mm -hmm. had my share of fillings done. Compared to my children, it's yeah, a lot different. Yeah, a, a lot of the kids nowadays, you know, with the fluoride being readily available in the water, it, it, it has made a big difference. That too, and they have to watch, you know, the mm -hmm. amount of sugar that's, this is called a rubber dam. It's okay. um, to isolate the, the tooth while we're doing the filling. Okay. There's a little clamp that's going to go right around your tooth behind the one I'll be working on. Okay. 
We use these routinely when we're in dental school. Of course, rip the bit. We'll take one more damn cone. Oh, how are they? It's a strange feeling, how I know. How do you see in there? Well, it's, that's the interesting part. Um, it's just one of those things that takes practice putting it on and trying not to rip it when you're putting it on. But your camera doesn't help. <laughs> no. <laughs> like I said, I haven't been filmed on this before, so. But you do have the special lenses? Um, yes. Uh, I have been using the magnification for several years now, and I think it makes a big difference when you're working. Do most dentists use those now? Um, nowadays they do, although there's still you know, some that prefer not to, but um, I just think it, it, it really helps when you're working far back in the mouth, you know, you're not, there's so many people that can't open very wide. And mm. Okay. I can't tell if I'm smiling or <laughs> I should have you turn the camera off till I get this on. <laughs> <laughs> this is a real show. Yes. These are always fun to put on. You have to worry about clamps popping off and have a piece of floss, Connie. And run that up right between there for me. Up close and personal. <laughs> there we go, thanks. And run right between that canine and the lateral. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, when I was in dental school, um, we used these for all the restorations, and we'd see patients walking around the clinics with these on. And mm. Just make sure you can breathe there. I think I'm, <laughs> I'm done. Are you drowning? I'm done talking. <laughs> For a little while, anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to start off by removing. There's an old alloy restoration, and I'm going to take that out and do my preparation. Does that feel, you feel like you're pretty numb there, Susan? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. A little more. <laughs> Not that you can talk uh -huh. back. Okay. So Connie's going to catch all the, the water that comes out of my hand piece here. So right now I'm still removing the alloy, the old sewing material. We've got a rinse there. A little more light here. Just 
kind of a deep alloy. And then I'll be going, this filling is going to go in between your teeth here, Susan. So I'm going to start that now. We'll wash that off again. Okay, let me get a little more light in here. Then we'll be restoring this with a composite of the white filling material. Um, we've been using a lot of that composite, probably about 90 Five percent of our fillings are composite. I'm going to switch over to my other hand piece, my slower speed hand piece. Okay, this is going to be a little bumpy here now, Susan. I just have to use this in the deeper parts of the preparation. You doing okay? Mm-hmm. Back to the slow speed again for a minute. For some reason, the kids really li really like this drill. Mm. It kind of drives the adults wild because it vibrates so much, but kids just love it. We call it Mr. Bumpy. We refer to my high-speed hand pieces, Mr. Whistler, and you know mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, we'll kind of walk them through and tell them as we are working, you know what what we're going to use and um, what to expect. That way, it helps alleviate a lot of their anxiety because there's so many kids that you know they just they're so afraid they hear about it from siblings or friends mm -hmm. when they come in. 
and when, once they do come in, they find out it's not as bad as they thought. Ahead and double that. Whenever we have a filling that goes in between the teeth, we'll use what's called a Tuffelmeyer holder and a matrix band. And that way we can pack the filling in between the teeth there. At least that. And this is just a wedge that I'm going to put in between the teeth. It helps to um, create a contact there. I'm not sure. We have so many different instruments that we use here. Connie has to keep track of all of them for me. <laughs> This is just an etchant, we refer to it as a Bluetooth cleaner. We're going to be using a, a bonded filling, a bonded restoration, and it just helps to create more bonding sites to your tooth. And we rinse it off. And dry it. Next we'll be applying a dental bonding agent and this is a special light that we use it's a visible light um, and it'll help to harden up the filling material we'll be putting in the tooth Get the bond a couple times here The reason we have this little orange shield here is um, that you don't want to stare at the light. It's such a bright, intense light that you can hurt your eyes if you look at it for a long time. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, this is a flowable composite I'm going to be placing underneath here. just form a base underneath the filling. The composite fillings take a lot longer to do than the alloy fillings just because with each step um, you have to stop and, and cure the, the filling material, make sure it's set up in between. The 
alloy is still a good restorative material, but I know a lot of people are concerned about the mercury content, and um, also now it seems like the focus is more toward aesthetics. Mm -hmm. And with these composite fillings, you know, they, they're a lot more aesthetic, and they've really improved the material over the past, I'd say, even five years. I'm just kind of condensing this in here. Okay, and I'll take that light again, Connie. Living here in southeastern Iowa, um, we've kind of had to be the jacks of all trades. You know, we're trained in all different aspects of dentistry and extractions and root canals and, and restorative. Um, although we do refer people to Iowa City for if we do feel that they need to go to the specialist. Let me use this one more time, Karen. again. Holding out cases in. <laughs> okay. Take the plastic instrument. Final time to hit it with the light. And you're not staring at it, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Off here now, Susan. Okay, and I'll take the rubber down for a sec.
Can I hold on to that for a second? Got some pretty tight contacts here, Susan. <laughs> okay, and we'll give you a rinse here. I'm gonna go ahead and polish that up now. The nice thing about these composite fillings is they're already hardened up when you walk out the door. Whereas with the alloys, you know, you have to wait a couple of hours before you could eat anything. I'm gonna just test the bite really quick before I I'm gonna bite together and kind of grind around. Okay, it's probably gonna be a little high. Have you bite together and kind of grind around again? Okay. This paper that I'm using just um, indicates any high spots on the filling that I need to remove. And I'll take the finishing discs, Connie. A lot of people are into lightening their teeth these days. Yes. Um, um, do you get a lot of that? Do people should or shouldn't do it on their own? Or Actually, we do sell um, bleaching kits through the office here, and if you try to buy them over the counter, they're um, not as effective as, as if you were to buy them in, in the office. Um, the kit we use here is called the Rembrandt system, mm -hmm. and it takes, if, if you use it daily, for at least an hour. The thing is, you have to be very faithful about using it if you want to see results, but you do really see results if you use it. And it is, it is safe to use. It's a carbamide peroxide gel that's used in special trays that are made for each patient's mouth, and um, the tr um, trays are to be worn daily with the gel solution in them. And since the 12, 12 years I've been out in practice, things have changed so much with the masks and gloves and, you know, being required. Like you were sanding, is that what you're doing? Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> These are little expensive sandpaper discs. <laughs> um, they're made especially, they're, they go in a range from coarse to fine. They're made especially to polish these composite fillings. I think we've got something for everything in, in dentistry. How many times should a person go to the dentist a year? Um, at least or? twice a year is good, every every six months. Um, I know in our office we usually take x-rays about once a year, and that way you can pretty much keep up on, on top of things and make sure there's nothing going on you know, that we didn't catch in between appointments. Mm -hmm. 
Good contact there. Okay. I don't know if you want to come in and take a look at our final restoration here. Okay, let me wipe the finger off here. And you can see she's got an alloy next door here, and this is the, the composite restoration that we placed. Really blends in nicely there. Okay. <laughs> so how are these other areas, Susan? <laughs> oh, they're, they're just great. Okay. Any other questions you wanted to ask well, mm. before we get started? or um, Cleaning and cleaning you recommend twice a year? Yeah, about twice a year mm -hmm. I would recommend getting your teeth cleaned and, and checked. Um, and like I said, x-rays about once a year, although some people prefer to wait, you know, every two years. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think a one-year interval works out well. You can and, catch a lot of things. And most do you think most people out there are going to the dentist, or do you have we, any figures on that? Or? Oh, no, I don't, but I, th I think um, since the emphasis now is more on prevention, mm -hmm. we'll, we do see a lot more people coming in, you know, they, they know that they need to come in, and right. but there will always be those that, that put it off until it's too late. Right. But Now, camera person, how much time do we have on this show? <laughs> You want to cut it off? 38 okay. minutes. So That's we're going to go on and just do what? Do the same process? Yeah. Two more times, two more places. <laughs> so that was basically so how we make you filling. suffer through this. <laughs> <laughs> and it is painless. And uh, I just wanted to share with you uh, modern technology mm -hmm. in the dentist office. Yep, there are no. lots of lots of new new things that we use. So, in case anybody has any questions, you know, we're always open to answering them. So, this is another show. This might be one that I take home and I air and say, "Whoops, we're not," or view it and say, "Whoops, we're not going to air it." We'll, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Thank you for tuning Thanks. into Channel Nine.